Hi, in this video we will be discussing about the metabolic effects of insulin. So this question can be asked as a short essay or even as a part of an essay question. Okay, so uh, first let's see what are the metabolic effects of insulin. So whenever you start the answer, you first have to write an introduction about what hormone insulin is. That is, it is a hormone which is produced by the pancreas and uh, its main function is to decrease the glucose level. So write two or three sentences about as an introduction and then write the metabolic effects. So you have to write the effect of insulin on carbohydrate metabolism, the effect on fat metabolism, the effect on protein metabolism as well as other actions. Okay, so let's see each one by one. So the effect on carbohydrate metabolism. So mainly three organs are under the influence of insulin. First one is the, it's in the liver, the adipose tissue and the skeletal muscle. Okay. And the main function of insulin is to increase the storage of glucose, increase the utilization, so thereby decrease the glucose output. So that is how insulin is decreasing the blood glucose level. So in the liver, what insulin does is it facilitates the glucose entry. Okay. So this it uh, does so by activating an enzyme called glucokinase. So glucokinase not only facilitates the entry of glucose, but also it converts it into glucose 6-phosphate. So because of this step, it is easier for insulin to stimulate glycolysis. So by glycolysis, glucose 6-phosphate will be converted to pyruvate. Now it oh, glucose also stimulates the storage of glucose. How? By stimulating glycogen synthesis. Okay. So all the glucose is either utilized by glycolysis or stored as glycogen. Okay. So that is the effect in the liver. Next, we will see the effect of insulin in the adipose tissue. So, in the adipose tissue, insulin will stimulate the entry of glucose. And this time it does so with the help of this transporter called GLUT4 transporter. So, by the help of this transporter, there is increased glucose entry into the adipose tissue. Now, inside this, it helps insulin stimulates esterification of fatty acid. What does that mean? See, here glucose is converted to a compound called alpha glycerophosphate. Now, this alpha glycerophosphate will stimulate the conversion of free fatty acids to triglycerides. So, because of this, there is storage of glucose as well as storage in the form of triglycerides. Okay. So, the two important steps that occur in the adipose tissue are one is esterification of fatty acids and storage as triglycerides. Next, we will see the effect in skeletal muscle. So, in the skeletal muscle also, insulin stimulates the glucose entry by stimulating the transporter GLUT4 transporter. And it is stored as muscle glycogen. So, glucose is converted to glycogen inside the skeletal muscle. So, that is a function of insulin and the effect of insulin on carbohydrate metabolism in the liver, in the adipose tissue and skeletal muscle. So, next we will see the effect of insulin in the fat metabolism. So, here also the primary organs that insulin act is the liver and the adipose tissue. So, and the main aim of insulin is to increase the storage of fatty acids and decrease the level of free fatty acids and keto acids in the plasma. So, it, in the blood it wants to decrease the free fatty acids and it wants to store them as triglycerides. Okay. See, because it decreases the keto acid level in plasma, it is also called an anti-ketogenic hormone. Anti-ketogenic hormone. That is why in diabetes mellitus, uh, there is a complication called diabetic ketoacidosis. That is because there are excess of keto acids in the blood. Okay. So, insulin is an anti-ketogenic hormone. So, now let us see the effect of insulin in the adipose tissue. So, it has two effects in the adipose tissue. One is it inhibits lipolysis. What is meant by lipolysis? Lipolysis means conversion of triglycerides to free fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, so it wants to inhibit this. So this step is actually stimulated by a hormone called hormone sensitive lipase. So insulin will inhibit lipolysis by inhibiting this hormone, hormone sensitive lipase. Now another advantage is that it is these free fatty acids that are usually converted to keto acids. So because of this inhibition, keto acids are also not formed. Okay, so that is the first action that is inhibiting the lipolysis, inhibiting lipolysis. The second action in the adipose tissue is promoting lipogenesis, promoting lipogenesis that means increasing the storage. 
so let's see how so we know in the small intestine the lipids that are absorbed are circulating inside the blood vessel as triglycerides now the problem with triglycerides is that it cannot be taken up into the adipose tissue as such it has to be converted to free fatty acids and only then it can be taken up into adipose tissue for storage so this step of conversion of triglycerides to free fatty acids in the blood stream is done by the hormone lipoprotein lipase lipoprotein lipase so what insulin does is it will stimulate this lipoprotein lipase so that triglycerides can be converted to free fatty acids and then this free fatty acids can be taken up into adipose tissue and stored so that there will be decreased level of free fatty acids inside the blood okay so insulin inhibited hormone sensitive lipase and stimulates lipoprotein lipase clear next we'll see the effect of insulin on fat metabolism inside the liver so as i said it is an anti ketogenic hormone and a lipogenic hormone so we know that keto acids are produced from free fatty acids right so inside a cell this free fatty acids are produced in the mitochondria okay so the free fatty acids from the cytosol has first to be transported to the mitochondria and there these free fatty acids are converted into keto acids okay and the enzyme that stimulates this transport is a, a enzyme called carnitine acyl transferase so i said insulin is a anti ketogenic that means it wants to inhibit this keto acid formation so what does it do it wants to inhibit this carnitine acyl transferase but insulin cannot inhibit this enzyme directly so what it, what does it do it will stimulate this malonyl coa okay so malonyl coa is a enzyme which can inhibit carnitine acyl transferase and this malonyl coa is produced from acetyl coa with the help of the enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase so what insulin does is it will stimulate this enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase and increases the formation of malonyl coa so now malonyl coa can inhibit the carnitine acyl transferase thus there will be decreased formation of keto acids understood so acetyl coa in the presence of the enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase is converted to malonyl coa malonyl coa can inhibit the carnitine acyl transferase so insulin stimulates this hormone acetyl coa carboxylase okay so that is how insulin decreases the keto acid formation now on the third effect of insulin that is the effect on protein metabolism so here again the main organs involved are the liver and the skeletal muscle and the general mechanism of action in both these organs are the same so you have to remember that insulin is an anabolic hormone anabolic means it helps in protein synthesis protein build up right so how does it help so it insulin stimulates the entry of amino acids into these cells the both liver cells and muscle cells and by increasing the amino acid it will stimulate the protein synthesis how by increasing the rna activity so because we know that protein cell synthesis on the ribosomes right so because of that increased rna activity there is increased protein synthesis now there is one more action for insulin it will decrease lysosomal activity so that there is decreased proteolysis okay so by both these actions the insulin will increase protein synthesis and thus it is called an anabolic hormone okay now finally we can see some other actions of insulin so what are these other actions first of all it decreases the plasma potassium level is this significant see clinically is very significant because in patients with increased plasma potassium level like as in hyperkalemia in, as a treatment of of hypokalemia insulin as well as glucose is given as an injection to decrease the plasma potassium level so that is one applied aspect of this function that is decreasing the plasma potassium level it also decreases food intake and promote growth now some for some additional scoring points insulin is given with glucose in the treatment of hyperkalemia that is what i just mentioned moreover there is a complication called diabetic ketoacidosis what is the basis of this see i said that insulin is an anti ketogenic hormone right so because it is anti ketogenic in diabetes mellitus there is insulin deficiency so when there is insulin deficiency the amount of keto acids inside the blood increases so that is why as a complication we have diabetic ketoacidosis now we'll see a sample question that was asked previously in kuhas university exam 
A 50 year old person complains of increased appetite, increased thirst and increased frequency of urination. The blood glucose was found to be 180 mg per deciliter. So answer the following questions based on your knowledge in physiology. What is the probable diagnosis? What is the probable diagnosis? Most probably it must be diabetes mellitus. Which hormone is affected? Most probably insulin must be affected. And what are the physiological effects of this hormone in the body? That's what we just mentioned, right? And enumerate the other hormones involved in the regulation of blood glucose. So you have, all, you have to write about the other hormones like glucagon which is involved in the regulation of blood glucose. Okay? So I hope the concept is clear and you know what to write when such a question comes for the exam. Thank you.